Hello everyone and welcome to today's um, Facebook and YouTube Live uh, for Clearing. Um, today we are joined by Linda Dean who is a Senior Lecturer in Child Nursing from the School of Nursing and Health Education. Hi Linda. Hi, good to see you Pete. Yeah, hello, um, good to see you too. Um, so we're going to get some questions coming in no doubt throughout um, the live broadcast but we may get some questions later on as well so if there are any questions um, and you haven't had time to ask them while we're live um, today. We um, we will respond to all your questions uh, throughout the day as well. Um, okay, so uh, really, first of all, I'll just kick off with um, you telling us a little bit about the School of Nursing and Health Education. Okay, thank you. And um, well, we're a very very popular school of nursing, and we have three campuses and. Maybe that's not so well known. We have one at Luton, we have one at Bedford, and we have one in Aylesbury. So whichever campus you go to, you will have exactly the same course, but possibly with a slightly different experience, depending if you want to study in Luton. Obviously, Luton is very, very busy. There's lots going on. If you want to study in Bedford, it's very green, open campus, and Aylesbury, is a smaller campus but it's unique in that the campus is within the grounds of Stoke Mandeville Hospital. So whichever you go to you will get exactly the same course, the same lecturers, you don't generally have to travel between campuses and each campus has its own hospitals which you would use for placements and also you would do community placements. So all very good district general hospitals, we use Stoke Mandeville, we use Luton Dunstable, we use Bedford Hospital, um, Amersham Hospital, High Wycombe Hospital, Milton Keynes Hospital. So all very busy hospitals that give you a very good insight into the type of nursing that you're studying. So thank you. Really thorough um, introduction there to the school. And that's actually covered off a couple of the questions that have already come in, Linda. So that's brilliant um, around our campuses. Um, so. There is one here around placement. You've kind of touched upon this. Um, do Will I get help with my placement um, if I was to join the university? Yes, and um, I should actually have mentioned mental health nursing, which I didn't mention mental health nursing. If I can just touch on that briefly, because my first answer focused very much on hospitals. Um, in terms of mental health, you can study mental health nursing at the Aylesbury campus or the Luton campus. Um, if you study at the Luton campus, placements would be within Bedfordshire. If you study at the Aylesbury campus, then your placements could be in Buckinghamshire or Oxfordshire. I also didn't mention child nursing specifically. If you study child nursing, that would be at the Bedford campus. We don't do child nursing in Aylesbury or Luton. So just let me clear those up. And then you asked about placement support. So I would say that you get excellent placement support with us. Um, all of us as lecturers have link lecturer areas that we visit on a regular basis. Obviously, if you had a concern about placement, then you can almost always contact your lecturer or one of the senior staff within your placement. But we do visit you on a regular basis. You don't have to worry as students. Some of you might be thinking, oh, how on earth do I go about arranging placements? You don't have to worry about doing that. We do that for you. We have excellent placements officers and their job is to make sure that throughout your course you get a really good range of placements. So, you know, sometimes people come on the course and think, oh, well, I know that when I qualify as a nurse, I want to work in such and such an area. But we still make sure that you get a good range of placements throughout the course. Thanks, Linda. Now, the next question is from someone who's obviously been on the website and taken a look at some of our facilities. Um, if you are interested in any of the courses, by the way, that Linda has talked about, do um, take a look at our course list to see what's on offer at beds.ac.uk forward slash clearing. Um, all the courses are listed there. Um, 
This one, um, yeah, is about our simulation suites that we've got um, and how much time do you spend um, in lectures versus in the simulation suite? We may just want to talk about what they actually are for anyone that doesn't know. Yeah, okay, so for anyone who isn't sure what we mean by simulation, um, each of our campuses has simulation facilities and really it's kind of, I suppose, the easiest way to describe it is as saying it's set up like a hospital ward, so it's got beds, it's got equipment, um, it's got mannequins who are super wonderful and they will speak to you and breathe and all kinds of things like that. So when you are working in the simulation lab, we, we try to make it as hospital or as patient focused as we can. So things that you might be worried about, you might be thinking, oh, what's it like the first time I go into placement? And the thing that always worries students is the first time you give an injection. But the wonderful thing about simulation is that you can practice on mannequins or we have special little injection pads. So you're doing it in a really safe environment. And then the first time you're going to practice and your supervisor says to you, right, today, you know, I'm going to supervise you and I'm going to support you in giving an injection to a, a live patient. It's not quite as daunting as it would be if you'd never had the opportunity to practice that in simulation. It's quite difficult to say exactly how much time you would spend in simulation. And obviously last year with, with COVID, students didn't spend as much time in simulation because it is quite a, an enclosed environment. But certainly with one of the units you study, which is all about nursing interventions, you would be spending time in skills and simulation to build your skills and your confidence, which is really important. So a really good mix. Thank you, Linda. That's brilliant. That answers the question. Um, one around expertise. Um, someone has asked, um, are you all registered nurses? In terms of lectures, yes, everybody has is on a register um, and a healthcare register. And I'm, I'm just racking my brains. I'm pretty sure that everyone who teaches on nursing course is a registered nurse. And we would also have, um, you know, maintain our professionalism. So we are all still current on the Nurse and Midwifery Council register. So lots of expertise in the department. With lots some... of expertise. A lot of us um, still work within the practice settings. So we're making sure that we keep updated. I personally still do shifts um, in practice to make sure that my skills and my knowledge is up to date. And an awful lot of the lecturers have been involved in COVID immunisation programmes and so on. So we still like to do real nursing and keep up to date. Now, obviously, um, lots of um, people watching this today will be watching from outside of the UK. Um, if, if a student wants to apply from outside of the UK, um, can they for any of these courses? For adult nursing, we will accept international applications. So yes, I mean, obviously, it's a lot more complicated if you are applying from abroad. So I would certainly say time would be very tight to apply for the BSc now and start in September. But we would love to have applications from abroad once UCAS opens again in September. Fantastic. Brilliant. Um, so if there are any more questions that come in after the live broadcast, do keep them coming um, and we will answer them throughout the day. Um, and if you want a tour of those um, simulation labs that Linda has uh, mentioned, they are on our website as well. Um, so, Linda, really, what advice would you give um, somebody who is thinking of applying uh, for a course within the School of Nursing and Health Education? Um, I definitely would say do your research and I appreciate over the last year it has been really, really difficult. I've interviewed so many people who've said I really tried to get experience, I tried to do voluntary work and we appreciate that's been very difficult over the last year. But 
do your research you know if you've got relatives or friends who are nurses speak to them ask them what they do in a typical day really be clear in your mind which field of nursing is best for you you know if you think you might like to do child nursing research child nursing if you think mental health is a great course for you then really do your research and make sure that you know the difference between each field of nursing because when you come for an interview with us we will talk to you about what your understanding is of what you're applying for so yeah i would say the best I, advice i can give is do your research and you know i know some people worry and think oh they're going to expect me to have years of experience i've interviewed some fantastic people who are aged 17 18 19 who haven't got that hands on experience but perhaps you've perhaps you've cared for a, a relative who is disabled or elderly perhaps um, you want to do mental health nursing and you have a friend who's had mental health issues so all of these kind of things will be giving you informal experience that you might think isn't relevant, but it absolutely is relevant. So the other thing I would say is think about your transferable skills. So if let's say I interviewed someone the other day who, who had a job on a customer service desk and that person was really used to dealing with customers with problems and perhaps customers who are a little bit annoyed about something. So any experience you have will be relevant to study in healthcare. So please, please do apply. That's really good advice, Linda. And I think so many people will not have um, known about the, the different levels of experience that are required. So it's definitely, if you're thinking about it, worth giving us a call. Um, numbers at the top of the screen um, and lines are open all day. Linda Dean, thank you very much for taking time out to speak to us today. A pleasure. Thanks, Pete. Take care. Bye-bye.